what I want to look at right now is water. What, what type of water should be, we be drinking and when should be, we be drinking it and why should we be drinking water? A man said to me, everyone tells me to drink water. You tell me why. So let me tell you why. So let's have a look at water loss in a day. So from the kidneys, now please bear with me here because I'm an Australian. Um, so I'm going to say litre, but I think you realise in the US a quart is the same as the litre. So from the kidneys, we have 1.5 litre loss. So we ask that you please ensure that you keep well hydrated. So that's at least eight glasses of water a day. Start early. This is what I do. Have half a glass when I wake up. Uh, go to the bathroom. Have another half glass. Get dressed. Have another half glass. Pray. Have another half glass. Read my Bible. Have another half glass. Run up and down hills. So, so you spread it out. And if you have that little bit of salt before every glass of water, it helps to get the, the water inside the cell. The more you perspire, the more salt that you need. And the salt that we use is Himalayan salt. There's, that's the pink salt, but the best one is the Celtic salt. A lot of people don't like it because it's wet, but it's wet because of the magnesiums. It has three magnesiums in it. And it's magnesium particularly that will get the water into the cell. We should stop drinking half an hour before the meal, and that means that we've got a nice acid environment, and then resume drinking one and a half hours to two hours after the meal. If you sit to eat your meal well hydrated, you will not need to drink with your meals. Many people who feel hungry two hours after a meal is often thirst because your body doesn't know the difference between thirst and hunger. So it's only two hours since a meal and you're feeling hungry, have a drink of water. Did you know that staying properly hydrated can transform your health so dramatically that it could be the key to reversing symptoms of chronic fatigue and boosting mental clarity by up to 30%? Dr. Barbara O'Neill uncovers six astonishing benefits of optimal hydration that go far beyond quenching thirst from revitalizing your skin and enhancing cognitive function to accelerating weight loss and improving digestion. These insights are backed by science and real-world results. In this video, prepare to be amazed as Dr. O'Neill reveals how simple, effective hydration strategies can unlock your body's full potential and revolutionize your well-being. Dr. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes that water is more than just a thirst quencher. It is the foundation of overall cellular health and vitality. Hydration plays a pivotal role in the body's biochemical processes, impacting everything from nutrient absorption to waste elimination. The human body is composed of around 55 to 60% water, with every cell relying on water to maintain its structure and function. Within the cell, water serves as a medium for biochemical reactions, ensuring the proper synthesis of proteins, the breakdown of food into energy, and the transport of molecules. Water helps maintain cellular turgor pressure, allowing cells to maintain their shape and integrity. Without sufficient water intake, the balance between intracellular and extracellular fluids becomes disrupted, impairing cellular communication and signaling pathways. Water is essential for nutrient absorption because it enables the digestive system to break down food and transport nutrients across the intestinal lining into the bloodstream. Because of the three magnesiums in Celtic salt, one is magnesium sulfate, and that's the Epsom salts. Another one is magnesium chloride, and the other magnesium is magnesium bromide. Because of the property of magnesium, that it's a warty, hungry molecule, when you put the, that Celtic salt in your mouth and you crunch it, and you release those minerals, the Mucous membranes in your mouth absorb the minerals and it's taken to the cell. Then you have your water. The magnesium pulls the water inside the cell. It's the quickest way to hydrate a body. Cells rely on this efficient nutrient transport system to receive the vitamins, minerals, and other compounds necessary for energy production and repair. Proper hydration ensures that metabolic waste, including carbon dioxide and urea, is efficiently removed from cells through the bloodstream and filtered out via the kidneys. When hydration is insufficient, the cells retain waste products, leading to a buildup of toxins that can negatively affect cellular metabolism and hinder the body's detoxification pathways. 
Dr. O'Neill also highlights how dehydration impacts cognitive function, as brain cells require water for efficient electrical signaling and neurotransmitter activity. Even mild dehydration can cause mental fatigue, impaired concentration, and mood fluctuations due to reduced efficiency in neuron communication. Hydration directly influences the body's energy levels, as cells need water to produce ATP, the molecule responsible for storing and transferring energy within cells. When hydration levels drop, ATP production decreases, resulting in feelings of lethargy and reduced endurance. Moreover, the circulatory system is heavily reliant on hydration to maintain blood volume and pressure, which ensures that oxygen and nutrients are transported to tissues efficiently. Dehydration thickens the blood, placing more strain on the heart and reducing oxygen delivery to cells, further exacerbating fatigue and cellular inefficiency. Hydration is fundamental to digestive health, as water supports every step of the digestive process. From the moment food enters the mouth, water acts as a crucial component in saliva, aiding the breakdown of food particles and enabling enzymes to begin the process of digestion. So let's have a look at what's happening. So here's Helicobacter pylori just doing its job. And by the way, every month when the antibiotic comes in, it kills the Helicobacter pylori off. But because the damage is still there, more Helicobacter pylori comes along to clean it up. See, if you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up. When he sits to eat, hydrochloric acid's released. And hydrochloric acid is just about to come down and wipe out Helicobacter pylori. And then what does the man do? Has a great big drink of water. What does that do to hydrochloric acid? We all remember from chemistry days, water dilutes acid. This initial stage is essential because poorly hydrated individuals often experience impaired saliva production, making it more difficult to chew and process food effectively. As food moves into the stomach, the presence of sufficient water is critical for the production of gastric juices, which are necessary for breaking down complex nutrients, particularly proteins, into smaller components that the body can utilize. O'Neill notes that proper hydration ensures that the digestive tract maintains an ideal environment for enzymatic action. Digestive enzymes produced by the stomach, pancreas, and small intestine rely on adequate water to function at their peak. These enzymes are responsible for further breaking down fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, which allows the nutrients to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Without enough water, the efficiency of these enzymes declines, resulting in incomplete digestion and the body receiving fewer nutrients. This can contribute to nutrient deficiencies over time, even if the individual is consuming a nutrient-rich diet as the absorption process is hindered by dehydration. In the intestines, water continues to play a crucial role by keeping the lining of the digestive tract lubricated, which promotes the smooth passage of food and waste. O'Neill explains that when the body is dehydrated, the colon absorbs more water from the waste, which leads to hardened stools and constipation. This not only causes discomfort, but can also slow the overall digestive process, further reducing the efficiency of nutrient absorption. Additionally, dehydration can disrupt the delicate balance of gut flora, as beneficial bacteria require a hydrated environment to thrive. Dr. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the critical role of water in detoxifying the body, describing it as an essential natural tool for maintaining optimal health. According to O'Neill, water serves as the fundamental medium through which the kidneys, liver, and lymphatic system efficiently eliminate toxins and metabolic waste from the body. The water-soluble toxin can also be released out via urine, which is why it is very important to drink adequate water. You need to drink adequate water so you've got the water to create the sweat to throw off the water-soluble toxin. It's important to drink adequate water so that you're creating enough urine to be able to release out that water-soluble toxin. And it's also important that you ensure that your colon is evacuating at least twice a day, ideally, because some of the water-soluble toxins will be released via your colon. The kidneys, which act as the body's filtration system, rely on adequate hydration to process and expel harmful byproducts of metabolism, including urea, excess salts, and toxins. Without sufficient water, the kidney's ability to filter blood becomes compromised, 
leading to an accumulation of waste products, which can trigger a range of health problems, from kidney stones to more severe issues like chronic kidney disease. The liver, as O'Neill highlights, also depends heavily on water to perform its detoxification functions. Water assists in dissolving the substances the liver processes, including chemicals, hormones, and fats, ensuring these toxins are properly eliminated from the body. Without water, the liver's detoxification pathways can become sluggish, allowing harmful compounds to recirculate into the bloodstream and contribute to systemic inflammation or fatigue. O'Neill points out that the liver requires water not only for the breakdown of toxins, but also for the production of bile, a substance that aids digestion and facilitates the removal of fat-soluble toxins from the body. The lymphatic system, often overlooked in discussions of detoxification, is also a key component of the body's cleansing mechanisms. O'Neill explains that the lymphatic system transports waste products from cells and tissues and relies on adequate water intake to maintain proper fluid balance and flow. When hydration is insufficient, lymph fluid thickens and slows, impairing the body's ability to flush out cellular waste and potentially leading to swelling, fatigue, and weakened immunity. Besides that, there is a profound relationship between hydration and skin health. Noting that water is an essential element for maintaining hydrated, clear, and glowing skin. She explains that the skin, as the body's largest organ, requires sufficient hydration to function optimally. When the skin cells are adequately hydrated, they maintain their elasticity and plumpness, preventing the formation of fine lines and wrinkles. Hydration plays a critical role in sustaining the integrity of the skin's natural barrier, which is responsible for protecting against environmental pollutants, irritants, and pathogens. This barrier, made up of ceramides and fatty acids, becomes compromised when the skin lacks moisture, leading to issues like dryness, sensitivity, and increased susceptibility to infection. Dr. O'Neill points out that proper hydration also enhances the skin's ability to detoxify. Water aids in flushing out toxins from the cells and tissues, reducing the likelihood of clogged pores, blemishes, and acne. Without adequate hydration, Toxins accumulate within the skin layers, exacerbating inflammation and contributing to breakouts. Moreover, the skin's natural exfoliation process slows down when it is dehydrated, resulting in a dull complexion and rough texture. By staying hydrated, the skin can more effectively shed dead skin cells, allowing for a smoother, more radiant appearance. She also highlights that hydration is vital for supporting collagen production. Collagen a structural protein responsible for skin firmness and elasticity relies on sufficient water levels to maintain its function. Without adequate hydration, collagen fibers become brittle and break down more easily, accelerating the aging process and leading to sagging skin. Water not only nourishes the skin from the inside out, but also helps distribute essential nutrients throughout the dermis, optimizing cell repair and regeneration. Dr. O'Neill further explains that hydrated skin is better equipped to retain moisture thanks to the increased water content within the deeper skin layers. This moisture retention boosts the skin's resilience against environmental factors like UV radiation and harsh weather conditions. Water also assists in balancing the skin's pH levels, preventing excessive oil production that can lead to acne flare-ups or the formation of blackheads and whiteheads. Now, believe it or not, hydration plays a key role also in maintaining joint and muscle health. Proper hydration helps lubricate joints, which are cushioned by synovial fluid, a water-based substance that reduces friction between bones. Because the muscles are so weak, and they're weak through lack of use, they're weak through lack of hydration. When the body is dehydrated, synovial fluid levels diminish, leading to increased joint friction inflammation, and pain, especially in individuals suffering from arthritis or other joint-related issues. Hydration becomes essential in these cases, as replenishing water levels directly supports the regeneration of synovial fluid, thereby alleviating pain and stiffness in affected joints. Hydration also plays a key role in controlling inflammation, as water is necessary to flush toxins from the body. Toxins contribute to the inflammatory response, and without adequate water intake, the body struggles to eliminate these substances effectively. This buildup can exacerbate conditions like arthritis, where chronic inflammation is a major concern. Water facilitates the removal of these inflammatory byproducts, 
enabling the body to manage and reduce inflammation more efficiently. As a result, joints and muscles experience less pain and discomfort when the body is properly hydrated. Muscles rely heavily on hydration to maintain proper function, with water being integral to the transportation of electrolytes like sodium, potassium and calcium, which are essential for muscle contraction. Without sufficient water, electrolyte imbalances can occur, leading to muscle cramps, spasms and general soreness. O'Neill highlights that proper hydration ensures muscle cells receive adequate electrolytes, enabling smooth and coordinated muscle contractions. In addition, water supports the elasticity of muscle fibers, reducing the risk of strains and tears during physical activity or periods of extended muscle use. Dehydrated muscles are more prone to tightness, fatigue, and pain, making water intake a preventive measure against these issues. Water is also necessary for optimal blood circulation, which supplies oxygen and nutrients to muscles and joints. When the body is dehydrated, circulation can become sluggish, limiting the delivery of these critical elements. Finally, we will explain how hydration is important for our brain function. About 75% of our brain is water. Water is needed for every body function. Our brain cells shrink when they don't have enough water. Headaches are common when we don't have enough water. Negative thought patterns can develop when our brain cells don't have enough water. Around every joint, there's fluid. And that fluid is synovial fluid, and it is 99% water. In a state of dehydration, the body can take some water from there to maintain full blood volume in the major arteries and veins. The blood gets very thick in dehydration. Our blood needs to be nice and thin so the part can pump it easily, so that the little filtering units in our kidneys can filter it with ease. So even mild dehydration can have profound effects on mental clarity, mood stability, and cognitive performance. The brain, being predominantly composed of water, relies on a delicate balance of hydration to maintain its intricate processes. O'Neill stresses that water is essential for the brain's chemical reactions, which are responsible for producing neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and acetylcholine. These neurotransmitters regulate everything from mood to memory, and when the body is dehydrated, the production of these crucial chemicals slows down, leading to cognitive impairments like memory lapses, difficulty concentrating, and poor decision-making. Dehydration also interferes with the brain's electrolyte balance, which is vital for the electrical impulses that allow neurons to communicate efficiently. O'Neill explains that even slight dehydration can cause these impulses to weaken, slowing down the brain's ability to process information quickly and effectively. This can lead to a sluggish mental state, where individuals may find it harder to stay focused on tasks, solve problems, or think critically. Often, People attribute these lapses in cognition to external factors such as stress or lack of sleep. But O'Neill emphasizes that dehydration is frequently the hidden culprit behind these issues. Mood regulation is another aspect deeply influenced by hydration, according to O'Neill. When the body lacks sufficient water, it triggers the release of stress hormones like cortisol. Elevated cortisol levels can lead to heightened irritability, anxiety, and emotional instability. O'Neill points out that this can create a negative feedback loop where dehydration exacerbates emotional stress, making individuals more prone to mood swings or feelings of overwhelm. Hydration, however, helps maintain emotional balance by supporting the brain's ability to regulate serotonin and dopamine, neurotransmitters that are directly responsible for promoting feelings of well-being and calmness. O'Neill also emphasizes that dehydration reduces oxygen flow to the brain, which can cause mental fatigue and brain fog. The lack of hydration diminishes the brain's energy supply, which is essential for keeping it alert and responsive. This oxygen reduction can create symptoms that mimic fatigue or burnout, but the underlying cause is often inadequate hydration. O'Neill explains that drinking water regularly throughout the day helps to keep oxygen levels stable in the brain promoting better focus, sharper thinking, and more sustained mental energy. This is particularly important for individuals who need to perform mentally demanding tasks, as dehydration can lead to significant declines in cognitive sharpness, reaction times, and overall mental performance. Additionally, O'Neill points out that hydration affects blood flow to the brain. Proper hydration ensures that blood circulates efficiently, delivering nutrients and oxygen necessary for optimal brain function. When dehydrated, 
blood becomes more viscous, slowing circulation, and depriving the brain of essential resources. This can manifest as headaches, dizziness, or a general sense of mental dullness. O'Neill emphasizes that staying hydrated not only improves cognitive function, but also helps prevent these physical symptoms that further impair mental performance. However, despite knowing all this, many people still make common hydration mistakes that can have serious long-term consequences. Click on this video to find out what those mistakes are and see if you're making them too. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more health tips from Dr. O'Neill. See you soon.